All right, so we've learned about the Bank of Canada. Now we need to see the influences of uh, commercial banks on the money supply. Um, so in this section here, we're gonna go over the whole money creation process. Although the Bank of Canada is the only one that could kind of create money in terms of bills, uh, other banks have an influence on the banking system. So let's see what kind of influence they have. So we're going to go through this money supply creation model very simply. Essentially, uh, we start from a situation where there's $100 without a bank. If uh, you imagine a classroom and there's like someone that has $100 there, well, the total amount of borrowing that people can have that run together is $100. There's no more than $100 around. But with a bank, uh, that money supply can go into the bank and which will lead to a situation where the bank will keep some of that hundred dollars as reserves and some of it they can loan out if you've watched the video that i suggested at the beginning of the chapter as money as that you get a good idea of how this whole process works i invite you guys to do so but if i think about it uh, with this hundred dollars a hundred dollars will be in it's Reserves, $100 will be its deposits that owes to whoever deposited it. Um, and the money supply will increase when the bank starts to loan out some of the reserves. And the motivation, as was well explained in the video, is that if the flow of new deposits in the bank is roughly the same as the flow uh, out from withdrawals, uh, a bank never has to keep all deposits as reserves which creates a fractional reserve system. So we have this uh, fractional reserve system. So let's say in this case here, they think, well, there's only going to be $10 that are going to be uh, pulled out or less at some point in time. So I'm just going to take that extra $90 and I'm going to make a loan. So because of this, you have this initial $100 that's deposited. They're creating $90, which is the banks creating money. And that is borrowed and if you're borrowing money like I don't know anyone who borrows money just to have more money uh, in their beds uh, and stuff like that normally when you borrow money it's to buy something so that $90 that will be borrowed will be spent uh, somewhere and that person who receives that amount of money because it's spent um, in their shop or something else uh, can deposit that amount of money in the bank which will lead to a new deposit and that new deposit will lead to more reserves and more loans and so on. So if we wanted to do the quick calculation of it all, you could kind of see the process a little bit more in the textbook. Well, it's gonna be, the money multiplier is gonna be one over the reserve ratio. So in this case here of a reserve ratio of 10 percent, we have a money multiplier of 10, which means that the total amount of money created is gonna be the original deposits times 10. So $100 creates $1,000 in the money supply. Since money stock is both currency and the man deposits by depositing this $100 of the bank, it has increased the amount of money available by $900. So some of the questions you might see in the textbook or you might see on quizzes, uh, make sure that you know how to calculate the money multiplier through this equation here. Make sure that once you've got this and you have the original amount of money that you're able to find how much money is now available and then afterwards if we're talking about uh, this money that was not uh, around in the economy at all it was like in a vault or was somewhere inaccessible well in that case that hundred dollars led to an increase of a thousand dollars of money available but if it was a hundred dollars that you just kept in currency at home and in your desk or something else uh, well, in that case, that $100 was already available, so you've only created that excess amount, which is that 1,000 minus this 100, which is this 900. So just make sure you read the question appropriately uh, to be able to answer whether it's 1,000 or 900 in this case. Some people may worry when they see how banks can behave in a way that uh, might not take into account the, 
the lenders uh, into account uh, because they might go bankrupt and through all these loans. Well, so you don't worry too much about your loans. The Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation is a federal crown corporation that covers automatically all depositors of member institutions. If bank failure, there's up to $100,000 money back. So if you have an account that has less than $100,000, you should get all your money back. If you have more than $100,000, well, that first $100,000 is insured. And um, depending on how risky these banks are, they might have to pay greater premiums, but that's not something that you face. They're, that's them that are covered by this insurance. And for um, uh, Desjardins, I'm pretty sure it's l'autorité des marchés financiers that does the same kind of job and they also cover up to a hundred thousand dollars so that's it's pretty much the same whether a commercial bank or a credit union so here in this whole money creation process we're creating money we're not necessarily creating wealth in the economy people are not getting wealthier or richer with more money floating around but giving access to more money means that there's more money floating around and it's easier to get a loan to work on a project so this is one of the main reasons why the government allowed this money creation process to occur because it just led to a better flow of money through the economy and just uh, more business opportunities and more growth. So it's not the money that creates the wealth, it's the access to the money that does. What happens if the reserve ratio goes up? Well, naturally, if you force the banks to keep larger reserves, they can't make as much loans. Therefore, the amount of money in circulation would go down. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And what's another thing that we could consider? That's not really covered in this textbook. It's covered in the Reagan textbook, which I've used in the past, uh, is the cash drain ratio. Because if you think about receiving an extra hundred dollars, you might not deposit that whole amount in the bank. Or if someone buys something from you and pays you a certain amount, you might not deposit that whole amount in the bank. Therefore, it's not true that that whole hundred dollars gets multiplied. There's a certain amount of money that gets cash drained in the sense that people want to keep a certain percentage of the money that they get as cash. These days, because banking machines are quite easily accessible and it's easy to buy things with uh, credit cards and debit cards, at least in Canada. People don't keep that much cash. If you go to another country where it's not as um, easy to obtain uh, purchases through uh, cards, you'll keep a larger proportion of cash. But regardless of what this number is, it's going to lead to a smaller multiplier. So the money multiplier, if you take into account both, if you're only given the reserve ratio, don't worry about the cash drain ratio. But if you're given both, both of them have an impact of reducing the money multiplier. So if we had that 10% reserve ratio situation that we had initially, which is represented here, and we add this cash drain ratio, it makes the denominator bigger. And it means that the money multiplier will be smaller. So as we keep more money as cash and we don't deposit in the banking system, that's less reserves and less loans possible, therefore less money created in this whole process. So you shouldn't be afraid of how this whole money creation process works, but it should give you an idea of uh, the influence of commercial banks in this monetary system. And it should uh, give you an idea that it's hard for the central bank uh, to uh, accurately control the amount of money available in the economy. They might want to reduce or increase the amount of money in circulation, which we'll see in uh, these next uh, videos. However, because the commercial banks can control the money multiplying process, it's very hard to manage it. Even if you put a minimum reserve requirement, they might decide to keep more, much more or a little bit more and stuff like that. So it's really hard to uh, know accurately how much money is actually available.